Welcome back to Maintenance Monday. Today, I'm at the Pinarello store in London and I'm gonna be getting handlebars changed on my bike. So I'm gonna guide you through the process because swapping out an integrated handlebar and stem with the hoses inside is what I think is one of the most frustrating jobs on modern bikes. Let's do this. Doing all the hard work today is Tristan, one of the mechanics here at the store. So first step of the process is to place the bike in the work stand, peel back the rubber lever hood covers and remove the bar tape. Now, if you're careful here, you can reuse the tape, but in my case, we're gonna be opting for new. With the tape removed, Tristan took off the head unit mount and loosened off the lever hoods using a five millimeter hex wrench. Next, the wheels and brake pads are removed. This is because at the end of the process, the brakes will need to be bled as the system will have been opened to feed the brake hoses through the inside of the handlebars. With the pads and wheels out of the way, the brake pistons are carefully pushed back into the caliper to allow the yellow brake bleeding block to be fitted. This stops the pistons from expanding during the bleed process later on. Now some calipers, such as these Shimano ones, use a ceramic piston which can easily be damaged, so if possible, use a nylon piston tool to be extra safe. From here, the brake hoses need to be disconnected from the levers using a 7mm spanner. At this stage, the hydraulic circuit is going to be open and a small amount of fluid is going to leak from the hoses and the lever. You can use some old cloths or an absorbent towel to stop this getting on the bike and other parts. With the hose disconnected, the levers can be removed from the bars and sat to one side. Small note here is to avoid pulling the brake lever as this is gonna cause more fluid to leak out and create yourself extra mess. In order to remove the hoses from the inside of the handlebars and stem, the ends of them are gonna to need to be cut off using a special brake hose cutting tool. This allows for the flare nut and compression fitting to be removed, which are too large to root through internally. Now that the brake hoses are partially removed from the bars, the next step is to undo the stem bolts, which clamp onto the steerer tube, and then you can remove the top cap and the top cap bolt. By doing this, any spacers and the one-piece carbon bar can be lifted up and off of the steerer tube at the same time, allowing the remaining brake hose to slide through the stem and stay attached to the bike. When it comes to installing the new handlebars, Tristan was kind enough to put the white decals on the side of the stem to match the color of my bike and then carefully remove the small cover which sits underneath where the head unit mount goes. This gains him access to reroute the brake hoses through the stem and out the front of the handlebar at the same time as placing the handlebar onto the steerer tube of the fork. Tube. To get the hoses through, a small pick or screwdriver is going to come in handy here. An important point to remember is that you need to route the hoses the correct way round for how you have your brakes set up, which in my case is left rear, right front. Here we can refit any spacers, the top cap and the top cap bolt in the reversal of the order that they were removed. You can also do the top cap bolt up so that you can add a small amount of preload to the headset bearings and remove any play. Usually this is in the region of two to four Newton meters and needs to be done before you straighten and tighten up the stem clamp bolts later on. From here, it's a case of refitting the levers and positioning them at a height that you're happy with, which usually is roughly parallel to the ground and angled straight ahead. And it's important to get these matched up left and right and torqued correctly. Now, Shimano recommends six to eight Newton meters for the clamp assembly, but check for the parts and the handlebars which are fitted to your bike. Next, we have a case of cutting the brake hoses to the correct length and reinstalling the flare nut followed by the compression ring and the barb on the ends of the hoses. Now a good quality brake hose tool is gonna to help you get a nice clean cut and insert the barb without damaging the hose. When you're connecting the brake hose back to the lever, Shimano recommend a torque of seven to eight Newton meters and the process is exactly the same for both the left and right sides of the bike. Now that we've got the hydraulic system sealed again, Disc brake cleaner or isopropyl alcohol can be used with a cloth to wipe up any spilt fluid. And at this point, the brakes are ready to be bled. This is the process that removes any air from within the system and replaces it with fresh fluid. And in the case of Shimano brakes, which are on this bike, it uses mineral oil, but some systems will use a dot fluid. And it's important to note these are not interchangeable, so check with what your bike uses. To bleed the brakes, 
A small reservoir is fitted up at the brake lever by removing a port cover, and then a fluid filled syringe is fitted to the caliper. As the bleed port is opened on the caliper, the syringe pushes fluid up through the system into that top reservoir, forcing any air out of the system with it. A few pumps of the lever to check all as well, and then you can plug the reservoir before removing it and then installing that small bleed port cover on the lever, ready to repeat the process for the other brake. With both brakes bled, you can clean all of the areas up with disc brake cleaner, remove the yellow brake bleed blocks from the calipers and reinstall the brake pads and wheels to the bike. At this stage of the process is a case of reinstalling any final parts such as the head unit mount and cover and then a final check of the brakes which normally are going to need a few pumps of the lever to self-adjust and work correctly. And of course crucially you need to centre the handlebars and tighten the stem bolts to the correct torque specifications. Bar tape is last on our list and is simply a case of either refitting the old stuff or buying new and reversing the process of how you removed it. But if like me, you're someone who struggles with this, Ollie has made a great video to guide you through the process, so that is well worth a watch. So there you have it, a pretty involved job to change an integrated bar and stem which uses internal routing and hydraulic disc brakes. So finally, a big thanks to Tristan and the guys at the London Pinarello store for helping me out. And as always, for more bike tech videos, please subscribe to GCN Tech and give this video a thumbs up. See you later.